Hey everyone, another live video here. I'm at the Bellingham shop and today I'm gonna answer some questions. I'm outside, thinking around. I'll show you guys a little bit around more. We got some more trucks coming in, so we gotta figure out parking. Uh, but while I'm just waiting for people to hop on, you go ahead and ask your questions. I'm going to send out a message to our uh, texting platform. Uh, so if you're part of that, you're getting a message right now, but if you're not, you want to join 855-575-1267. Send the word landscaping to that. Right now, I'm going to text everyone and let them know that we are live. And I'm going to allow for comments to get on here because last time it didn't allow it to go. Here you go. I'm just going to put hi. All right, good. I can see comments. All right, so comment below. Right now, I'm sending a text message to all of uh, those of you on the texting platform. And then I got two questions that have already come in on the texting platform. Uh, so I am going to answer those. Hey, Dave Limberg, thanks for joining. Go ahead and post your comments and questions. I'm gonna send a quick message out to everyone, letting them know we are live. And I'm gonna show you guys around the shop today. Uh, we got two more trucks. We got one truck, a car, this week. Next week, we got another truck coming. So we gotta kind of move some stuff around. So. You all are gonna help me with how we can uh, move the parking around and situation uh, here at the shop. It's a good problem to have. Let me go ahead and just let everyone know we are live on Facebook. We are live on Facebook video at the shop. Go to Facebook and join now. Cool. All right, 27 of you guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining the day. Hope you had a great 4th of July. I'm gonna show you around the shop a little bit today. Send this out, send now. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys around a little bit. Quinn, thank you. Guys, post your questions below just like Quinn did. I'm gonna get to those in just a second. While those are rolling in though, let me show you around a little bit. Oh, make sure I'm not on Wi-Fi. Give me one second. Connection available, very good. All right, because I don't want to lose my wife, I want to go away from the office. So I'm out here at the shop. Sorry, everything's backwards, remember that? I'm on Facebook Live, so that's my car. That's my daily driver right there. Um, but then this is, and the reason I'm doing this today on a Sunday is because otherwise the trucks are always gone. So this car is brand new. We just got that this week. And P11, yeah, that one right there, is brand new this week as well. So this is a trailer that's set up. I'll show you real quick. Again, remember, sorry about it being backwards, everybody. It's just because it's a mirrored video on Facebook. But these are the ramps we use. These allow for the 30X X mowers. We got to modify them somewhat. And then underneath, we have to put a bracket to, to fortify it because it's aluminum. So it's really uh, pretty uh, unstable. Uh, or sorry, weak because it's aluminum. So we, when we cut this, to make room for the 30x so kind of the 30x hopefully you can see what i'm doing here uh the 30x basically the 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 deck goes right here and kind of sits in this notch but even though there's a 31 inch rack because the 30 inch is a little bit wider than the deck actual 30 30 inches we have to notch it out and then we have to fortify it because otherwise this corner right here sags because we've cut the metal so underneath we have to put that metal bracket that's steel, um, and that works pretty good. Uh, we, we will probably end up fabricating our own racks, and maybe we'll sell those to people online and things, but we'll probably end up doing our own racks because these are not the best in the world. We have some steel ones that we have down in Mount Vernon as well, but those have some issues with the ramps too. Like we're, I have not, I have scoured it in there. We have bought so many of these ramps, but when you're talking about 30 exit uh, mowers, 30 inch mowers uh, for these trailerless setups. Uh, I have yet to find a ramp that I actually really like. But this right now is the one we are playing with. We got five more that we have over here. Five more of them just came in the mail. They can, you can get them on trailerracks.com. I'm not a huge fan of them. Like they are not the best thing in the world. But uh, for now, it's what we're using. And uh, let me answer a couple of these questions and we'll keep walking around here. Quinn asks, what marketing tips are working best for the middle of the season? Thoughts on power washing. Um, in our market, we're still very, very busy. I think what I had earlier in the whole virus thing, I said one of two things was gonna happen. One, we were gonna have a very, very 
uh, you know, bad year in the industry, or two, we were gonna have a very late spring rush. And that's what we're having right now. Even though usually this time of year, most, most landscapers are getting slower, Right now, we're having a late spring rush. Most landscapers are very, very busy right now. Lots and lots of leads. And so that's what ended up happening was we had a late spring rush. And so we've been super busy. Uh, for us, we don't usually start doing any sort of pressure washing until the winter when we slow down a little bit. Uh, and even then, we're not a huge fan of pressure washing. It's just another added issue, right? Like leaks in the, the valves, in the hoses, like all that sort of thing. Uh, becomes an issue so we don't usually do a lot of power washing but it's definitely when you're solo or you have one or two employees definitely super profitable something that you can do uh, during your slower season when landscaping or lawn care is not a viable option so i'm out here front here by the way if you've never been here this is the main drag uh, highway we got like a putting green here we installed next to our sign um just walking here along the front of the shop all right next question tony Hey Mike, what do you think of the used trucks versus if you could pick up a new half ton with warranty for say 25K? Um, so I talked a lot about this at last year's conference, uh, so 2021, or sorry, 2020, um, talking about used vehicles and things. So all of these trucks that you see are used. We've never bought a used one. Uh, the reason for that is this, let me show you. I'll just, I'll just show you all the issues with our trucks. So here, this is P5, great truck, but you can see here they ran over something before. Oops, you can kind of see it pulled out this fender a bit, kind of dented this up a little. You know, stuff happens. We're working around skid steers and materials and rocks. This truck right here, this is P4. You can kind of see it. See that dent right there? That's from when, uh, back in the day when we delivered materials. One of our guys were delivering materials in a dump trailer, cut the corner too tight on a gate, and basically took the whole gate out and dented up the side of the truck. Uh, then you got like the back here of P1. You got scratches on the paint, scratches up top here. The nice thing is we paint these you know, every few years, so it'll end up looking a lot better. But again, like they're not perfect. Um, and if I had a $25,000 truck and someone wiped out the side like that, I'd you know be horrible. <laughs> uh, the value of that truck would decrease dramatically. And you gotta realize that the resale value on a, a landscape truck is so low that if I buy a new vehicle, not only does it depreciate them like so much and go down in value so much the minute I drive it off the lot, now it's going down in value simply due to the fact that we dent it, we wear and tear it, guys are hard on them. And so we just focus on trying to be as good on our maintenance as possible. Uh, so we really do focus on used vehicles that have good guts in them uh, and that all our guys can drive, so no manual. No, We try to reduce diesel as much as possible. We have a couple of diesel trucks over there. That's a diesel, that 350 and that 450. Um, but aside from that, because those are our plow trucks as well. Actually, because I'm on data, I can walk you guys to the back of the shop and show you the back where we have um, the snow plows. Um, but yeah, I, I'm still a big fan of buying used vehicles for landscapers. Uh, like that, I'll show you, I'll go back and walk you guys through that estimate car in just a second, but that's a Ford Focus. It is, how much did I pay for that? $3,200. Um, and you know, you painted it for 900 decals for 500. So all in, you're looking at less than five grand. It has 120,000 miles on it, but has AC, great little driver around town. I'm um, just showing you guys the back of the property. So I'm not usually back here because the Wi-Fi is so far away, but today I'm on data. This is where we dump all our clippings and recycle everything and keep it all composted. They push it over the cliff side. You can kind of see as I walk a little closer. You can push, they push it off the side of the hillside, but these are where our snow plows are at. And that's why we have the diesels um, is for that, as well as the fact that we can use those diesels for the projects when they're hauling like dump trailers and things. But if you guys watched my last video, you know we're moving quite a bit of stuff around. Like we're taking all these bins out over here, right, right, right there, and I'm gonna put another box for storage. Um, and then he had a good idea, and that is we're gonna two of these boxes, we're gonna put two of them side by side, and then a, a space in between, and then just put like a, a metal, like a sheet metal over the top, and allow for some covered storage. And un underneath there, we'd put like wheelbarrows or like hand tools, things like that. Um, you can see we had some problems because our delivery supplier brought a bunch of dirt, brought way too much, and then didn't dump it in the bins. Like we have soil coming out to Wazoo in the middle of 
our driving area, which was kind of annoying. But um, you can see we've moved the, the track loader and skid steers over here now um, because we're trying to make more space for the employee parking, which has been, we've got quite a few new hires and new team members. So, all right, a couple more questions here. All right, here we go. Jason, Jason Atkin, Atkins asks, who should you hire first, estimator or a project manager? Also, what type of salary do these individuals make? All right, I would recommend, personally, again, this is my point of view, if you're at the point where you're at, you know, 800, 900,000 in annual revenue and you're getting that point, I would hire a project manager first. They're gonna be easier to find. And the last thing you wanna let go in your business is the sales, if you're good at it. Let me just clarify. If you're a great salesperson, that should be the last thing you, you let go of. Um, that being said, if you are really good at sales, like one of our franchisees is this way, really good at sales, but he needs to find a project manager to do the jobs because he's not good at those, that, the, the project management side of things. So at the end of the day, it's gonna be, the answer really is do the thing, you know, hire out the thing that you're not as good at in terms of either sales versus the projects. And then, um, but in general, I would say most owners should let go of the estimating secondarily to the projects. Um, just in general, that's just my two cents on that. Uh, and what type of salary do these individuals make? Um, I'm not really stuck on salary. Uh, it depends on the size of your business that you want to grow, but honestly, I would usually try to push you towards trying to do some sort of profit sharing, like giving them a, per a percentage of profit on a quarterly basis. This is what we talked about at the Landscape Summit. And giving them a percentage of profit as well as a percentage of growth year over year is a great balance uh, for managers or estimators um, if they're in that position. All right. If you guys have a specific question about what you want to see on Shop 2, let me know. I'll try to go around. Quinn asked, Mike, thoughts on medium duty dump truck 650 or 5500 size or using a gooseneck 14,000 gross vehicle weight dump trailer trying to stay under DOT yeah so the big thing is staying under DOT so you don't your guys don't have to have a CDL uh, it's not worth risking it trying to get a triple axle in our state you have to have a, D, uh, a, a commercial driver's license CDL um, so it's not worth it as well as if a truck has over 26,000 pounds gross vehicle weight in our state, we have to have a, a CDL. So, um, we don't ever do like triple track, uh, axle. That's why we don't have big, big trucks either. Cause it's, if, you know, if I got a quarter, a three quarter ton pickup and I got a trailer, I'm already at 10,000 pounds. So if I'm going to try to take 10,000 pounds of gravel, I'm at 20,000 pounds already. I don't want to be pushing that 26,000 pound marker if, if the guys got pulled over and got in trouble for not having a CDL. So my opinion, if you get a 6,500 or like even that, that uh, F450, if you get a really heavy truck that's like 10,000 pounds, it's going to be the weight that restricts you from how much you tow because their truck's now 10,000 pounds. Then you got a four, you know, a 6,000 pound trailer, you're pushing your weight. So honestly, sometimes if, unless you're going to get CDLs, having bigger trucks doesn't really help you a whole lot because you're restricted by your gross vehicle weight if you're not going to go CDLs. So obviously every single state's different. I would just look at your state and do the math. But honestly, like we push, we push the weight limit when we're taking a, a three quarter ton with gravel or like with a skid steer. So it's not really worth it getting a bigger truck, which adds weight, which is going to reduce the amount that you can pull anyways. So keep that in mind. It just depends on your, on your local um, state rules in terms of what the gross vehicle weight is. Uh, okay, questions, questions. Uh, Vicky, hi Mike. Hey Vicky, how you doing? Haven't heard from you in a while. Hi Mike, how do you handle callbacks on a landscape project that has already had a walkthrough at the end? Okay, yeah, so this happens a lot. Um, don't worry, you're not like crazy or like, your employees aren't horrible. This happens a lot, a lot of the time. And this is when you've done a callback and then they, or sorry, you've done a walkthrough, your crew has done a walkthrough and then you get a callback and it's like, seriously, we did a walkthrough and you signed off and said everything looked great. And now you're giving us a callback, like seriously, uh, it's super frustrating. A lot of times this happens when the crew does a walkthrough with the, the husband and then the wife comes home and doesn't like something or vice versa. You do the walkthrough with the wife, the husband come, comes home and sees an issue or wants something more. And a lot of times it has to do with expectations. The wife was expecting the uh, whole property cleanup when the husband had specifically asked in the estimate and did the walkthrough and was only expecting the hedges to be done. 
Like this happens a lot. So uh, how we handle that is gonna be on a case by case basis. Like a lot of times it has to do with like, hey, you gotta do a work change order, that's a completely different estimate. And that's the importance of doing very detailed estimate notes as well as really detailed videos, project management videos, because you can literally show the, the client like, hey, here's your estimate, which is in detail, shows that that was not included. And then we did a walkthrough. Oh, and here's the video that the crew saw from the estimator and those things were not mentioned. So having very detailed estimate notes is usually the saving grace on that, as well as project management videos and uh, making sure that there is no ambiguity in the estimate. So for example, instead of saying pull weeds on your estimate, you need to say how you're gonna pull the weeds. Are you gonna just pull them by hand? Are you gonna knock them down with a weed whacker and then spray them? Are you gonna rototill it? Are you, like, you gotta spell those things out. And the more detailed your estimate notes are, the the less likely you're gonna get stuck with having uh, someone that says, oh, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. You've gotta be very clear in the not just what you're doing, but how you're going to do it in the estimate. That's gonna save you the most uh, in terms of callbacks and all that good stuff. All right, here we go. Any online business in the lawn care field you recommend getting into? Um, Carlos, not really anything specific on that. Steve West, hi Mike. Hi Mike, do you think that sometime in the future that you let other small companies in on your remote security site that you use for your franchises? Hope that makes sense. A remote security site. I'm guessing you're talking about P4P. Uh, we're allowing version one. It's gonna be coming out at the end of July uh, for, for the course members, but we won't ever let V2 go out. It's just for the franchisees. It's very, very specific to how we run Augusta. Uh, James, Mark, take that back. Down the road, maybe we'll let V2 out if we've created V3 down the road. But um, V2 is, is pretty awesome and it's just for the franchisees. James, Mark, what vehicle do you personally drive? James, I will show you what I personally drive. Show over here. Sorry, I have my glasses on and off, on and off. I parked outside the gate because I didn't feel like unlocking it. Um, we've had some problems with our solar panels. So I was kind of coming by today. I was driving by on the road and I figured I'd stop by just to make sure our solar panels are charging correctly. But this is the car I drive all the time. Honda Accord, two-door coupe, four-cylinder, great gas mileage for driving down to Mount Vernon, down to Seattle, up to Vancouver. Um, and what's really cool about it is the write-off because it's a business expense, super cool. And then this is C2. So my car is C1, this is C2. And this is the one we got just this past week. It's a Ford Focus, 2008. Has 120,000 miles, I think. And with the car, the car was 3,200, paint and decals, everything all in was like five grand. Um, but yeah, that's the car over there that I per personally drive. I really like it. I got it for under $7,000. Lucas Musolf asks, do you like your shipping containers for storage or shop? Do you have one to show? Yeah, so um, I'll eventually end up at the back of the shop and I'll show you inside the storage ones, but that is not what we use for the office. I'll show you inside the office in case you've never seen inside of there real quick. Next question, Steve Mursk asks, hey Mike, just wanted to say thanks for doing the videos and Q&A. My pleasure. So that dinging, we have motion detectors when you come around the office and that triggers the security system because we have had people try to rob things. Lights, camera, action. All right, so this is the office, if you've never seen it before. Um, we have a bunch of new team members, six of them that just started. And so we put them with a mentor. So at our team, we have more experienced folks as the mentor, the new team members as the mentees, and the mentors are responsible to report on how their mentee is doing, how they're learning, things like that. This is our dispatch board that shows which truck they're using, the trailers, etc. Hopefully my data is fine underneath this metal roof. Hopefully it doesn't cut out on us. Um, this is my desk right here, which I come in on Mondays and Thursdays for team meetings. This is where Liz resides all the time. Brandon sits here. Lee sits there. Command center's in Ferndale, so I can't show you all their offices right now. But uh, that's kind of the office, kind of a two second view of it. Um, we got some yellow slips. It looks like here. If you don't know what yellow slip is, watch the other videos. Some callbacks, basically. And then Liz gives these to the new hires which is from a little tiny book from Jocko Willink. And so we have a, a Audible account where there's 160, uh, six, 160 audio books. Uh, 
and on those audiobooks, everything from leadership to business, money, personal development, strategy, like all that sort of thing. And so there's obviously Jocko Willink is known for uh, extreme ownership, but then there's a kind of like a handbook he makes that Liz gives all the crew and the team. I don't know if there's anything else you want to see. Liz makes these notes up here. Judge people by the quality of their work and the content of their character. They're kind of cool. We have pictures up from our team the past few years. Um, this has been giving us issues, which is our internet, because we're on solar, and when the power goes off, the internet seems to freak out. Uh, I don't know if you guys are interested in this, but this is the dispatch board. P stands for pickup. Then you got ET, which is enclosed trailer. Then you got, oh, this is all backwards, DT3, which is dump trailer. So that's kind of how we do everything, and these are equipment, other things like ladders, uh, if they take a track load or a skid steer out, that's where they have to put it up on the board. There's the keys, and you're like, oh no, someone's gonna rob you. Don't worry, we have security cameras everywhere. If you tried, we would catch you. All right, questions, questions, questions. Chuck Birchfield, can you show your scoreboard while you're in your office? I can't, unfortunately, tar uh, Chuck, because we show it on that screen on Monday mornings, um, and it's digital. So unfortunately, I cannot do that, I'm sorry. We do that on Monday mornings, we show the team scoreboard up on there, and that's basically a representation of revenue divided by payroll, and we come up with numbers for each crew, then we give a weighted average, then we do budget hours versus total hours on uh, all the projects. So that's that. Any more questions? I'll answer maybe two or three more, I got five or 10 minutes before I gotta get out of here. Uh, but while you're, Getting a question or two, I'll walk in the back of the shop and show you inside one of the boxes. They're nothing really too special, but if you haven't seen them before, uh, they're really good for storage. And that one up front that has the solar panels on it, it's actually an office too. Uh, we just don't use it much. More or less like if we need a private meeting with an employee or something like that, we'll go in there. Oh, this is gonna be difficult. I gotta unlock this thing and hold my camera at the same time. Uh, come on. I know it's going to be messy in here because they're rearranging a bunch of stuff. Caleb is our uh, one of the guys who takes care of our equipment. And I know he's, he's been rearranging things. So we're kind of going through growing pains because we've got all these new people and we got to make more space. So they've been rearranging things. We have this box. It is 40 feet long. Eight feet wide, I think 10 feet tall. It is hot in here, merciful heavens. Woo! Um, but yeah, you can see it's a little bit disorganized because they're fixing some stuff in the back here. Uh, they got this bench here. They got another bench they're building in the other box. But this is where they, oh man, it's hot in here. Um, this is where they fix a bunch of stuff. The, all the uh, wheelbarrows go there. Invest in good wheelbarrows. Or else you'll go through wheelbarrows like crazy if you get them from True Value and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so that's one of the boxes. Here. We got one of these lights you can add in there. It's a LED light and it brings power into the box. And that feature I think was an extra few hundred bucks, but it allows us to have the blade sharpening in there and everything. So that's pretty cool. So I'll show you guys like in probably two months. Whoa, I gotta turn the light off. Um, in two months, I'll show you guys, I can do more of a shop tour once all the boxes are rearranged and we've moved everything around. Cause right now, this is where all of our team members park. All along here, back to the salt, and then over there, all the way to that cone, right there. So that's where they park, all along there. But the problem is we're running out of space and it's becoming pretty congested in the morning. And so we're kind of moving a bunch of stuff around. Wow, that was we're moving a lot of things around, moving stuff inside the boxes around. We're taking away that green shed you can see it over there the green shed that's over there we're taking that away so we can get more parking on the other side of those bins make some more space we've got another truck coming in this week it's getting painted uh and then it'll be in for service so all right next questions how long on average do you train a new hire so our model is trying to keep services as simple as possible so that a, a new hire can become profitable as soon as possible. They can make above base pay on P for P as soon as possible. And so we try to simplify our services as much as possible. Well, I said possible a lot, but um, we want them to be profitable within at least 
like at the most a week or two. So if they have experience in mowing, they're probably gonna be profitable within a day or two, honestly. Uh, if they don't have any experience, a week or two is what it takes to kind of get them up and running uh, and profitable. And that's what I would say. If it takes longer than like two or three weeks in our system where we don't have a lot of complicated stuff, then they're probably not a good fit for us. So James Sickles asks, how do you uniform? We do not wear these as uniforms. I promise you that. We wear yellow uniforms. If you go to our website, AugustaLongerServices.com, you will see our yellow uniforms. They just say Augusta Long Care on the front. Uh, and our slogan is your personal greenskeeper. I will show you that on the front sign. And so if there's a couple more questions, I'll answer those and then I'm gonna log out of here. Try to get back to the studio. Hopefully this was helpful for some of you. I know some of this might be new. A lot of you might have already seen the shop when we did the tour at the conference, but that's our sign. So that's our, James, this is our slogan, your personal greenskeeper. And then just in case people are, haven't been here, this is what the front of the shop looks like. Let me see if I can show you a little bit more. On the front here, we got these cords for the diesels to get plugged in. And around front here, we got a patio or two. And uh, so yeah. All right, well, there's still 40 of you on here. If you have a question, post it. I'll answer two more questions. I'm gonna set this over down over here. Um, but if you have any questions, that's a taco truck, by the way. We have a beautiful taco truck right next to our office. It's well visited, well patronized by our team. <laughs> we have all the trailer list setups here. Those are all trailer list setups. These are trailer list setups here. And the new truck that's coming in is trailer list setups. These are aluminum tray cargo carrier ramps. And this is what they look like when they're put together. So, cool. I'm gonna set this down here. Any questions? Questions, questions, questions. Growing your business, marketing. Anything to do with lawn care, landscaping, going once. Jeff Logan. What markup do you put on plants and other materials? Um, traditionally around 20 to 30% at least is what I'd recommend. And uh, yeah, that's what I'd recommend. Uh, but it just depends like if you're, if you're doing more landscaping versus mowing, et cetera. But traditionally at least 20 to 30%. Whoa. Next question, Chuck asks, are you running one or two guys for trailer lists? We run one person if we can, but when we have so many new employees like we currently have, we have to put the mentors and the mentees together on those mowing crews. And so the trailer list setups will sometimes have two people, but ideally we have one person. It's most efficient, but right now it's harder to find. No, it's, it's faster to get an employee up and running than it is a truck at the current moment. Uh, and so we have another truck coming. We can move more and more people to solo routes as we get more trucks. Um, but I think we're at 14 now, 14 trucks. So anything more than 14 employees we have to double up and when we get like in the past couple of weeks we've got five or six new employees we have to double them up anyways for training so it's uh not a big deal jeff logan chuck morris daniels where are you located this this shop that i'm at right now is bellingham washington our other shop is in mount vernon and then we have all the franchisees all over the place which i will be actually showing you all in september because josh and i are going to travel the u.s and meet a bunch of the franchisees it's gonna be a lot of fun John Gangle asks, would you buy used or new skids and mini excavators if you're in the market for one? John, I personally would buy a new one. Uh, that's just me though. And I usually buy equipment new, mostly due to the fact like if you were really good with equipment and diesel engines and fixing pins that are broken and all that stuff, all power to you, you could probably get a better deal used. But we would buy our equipment new. We're traditionally, traditionally gonna go with a cheaper brand. We're not gonna get like a Bobcat or a Kubota. Um, we're gonna go with a cheaper brand. We're gonna get, but we're gonna hire out the maintenance, which means it's a little costlier. So we want new, we don't want issues, and we traditionally buy all our equipment new. Just one man's POV. Charles Mills, are you running any trailers anymore? Yes, we are right now. We're running four. As soon, and as they die, they will no longer exist. So we have four trailers over there. One, two, three, and four. And if I went over there and showed you, you would see why I'm against trailers. They're dented, um, tires, you got brakes, you got ramps, you got cords. All that stuff just is annoying and maintenance. Training people is harder. Uh, we're moving 100% towards trailer setups and probably by next spring we won't have trailers. Brandon, EDDM versus Google Ads, spend ratio. 
Um, right now, in the current market, and I'm recording this, which is July 2, 2020, I would say 100% Google Ads. I would say nothing on every door direct mail, but that could change. And marketing changes. Like, like people sometimes listen to the stuff I made three years ago, like, oh, you said X, Y, and Z. It's like, look, that's three years ago. This stuff changes. Like, three weeks ago, stuff changed. So, you gotta stay in, on the cutting edge of stuff and, like, figure out what's working in your market and then double down on it. And when it starts not giving as good returns, you, you keep testing and you figure out what's working. So, you know, we know the three things that are working in our market and we just pound, pound them, we keep testing. And when one decreases, like Facebook ads four or five months ago was really great. Then it got really expensive because everyone was, um, everyone, oh, the little kid just about ran out on the road, mercy. Um, everyone was, went on to, uh, went from TV to social and digital with the, with the advertising because of the virus and everyone was at home. And so the price started going back up. You know, do I think that this current boycott of Facebook ads is going to decrease the price because there's less? Not really. I think only a few percentage of their revenue is being affected, honestly. Uh, less than 20%, uh, no. Uh, I think their top 100 advertisers make up less than 20% of their, fa their advertising revenue. There's a lot of small businesses and medium-sized businesses. So I don't think it's gonna really like drive the cost down, but definitely something we're keeping our eyes on. But stuff like that fluctuates all the time. You just gotta be knowing what's, what's going on in, in the market. Amity Morales, one person services. How many lawns, Mike? Just depends on the size of the lawn. With our 30X mowers, we don't really have a, a size in terms of cap, like capping them on a certain size. And so, um, uh, you know, in terms of number of lawns, anywhere from 12 to 20 in a day, just depends on the size of the lot, if it's dry uh, with that 30X mower. Uh, Andy Burleson, do you find an aluminum ramp that fits 30 inch without any modifications? Yes, I have. I don't like, the, I don't like it though. Uh, there's one on that's a 36 inch wide, don't like it though. We've bought so many of these things. And so, honestly, I know Andy, we've been in touch about it before, but we're probably gonna have to custom fab our own eventually. If I do that, I'll try to probably one day maybe sell them online, but it's not something I'm really interested in like fat, like manufacturing and all that, but there's just nothing out there that we have found that we really love. It's either steel and very, very heavy, uh, or it's aluminum and we gotta do a bunch of modifications on it. So currently, this, what we're using now is kind of the best option that we found, but it's definitely not perfect. Like, there's a bunch of ways I could fix that ramp and make it better. Uh, everything from just making it sturdier to changing the ramp setup so it's not a one long piece, but it folds like a dovetail, a bunch of different things. But that's the best one we've found so far. Um, but yeah, we'll probably have to custom fab our own. So anyways, thank you everyone. I uh, hope you had a great 4th of July weekend, and I appreciate everyone for hopping on here saying hello and asking some questions. Uh, if you haven't already, check out landscapebusinesscourse.com. If you're a new member, check out the course. Uh, lawncarewebdesign.com is where you can uh, get your website built by us. And last thing is that Landscape Summit 2021 is going to happen. It's gonna happen January 16th, 17th, and 18th. Wait, I said that wrong. 14th, 15th, and 16th. January 14th, 15th, and 16th, we are gonna have Landscape Summit. 2021 and really looking forward to that everything that's gone on the past five months is gonna be great content we're going to talk about in depth at the conference uh as well as uh new franchisees can join in august so in august we're having another training weekend we'll have a couple franchisees here getting trained uh, i don't know if the border will be up uh, open by then for the canadians but if it is we'll have some canadians here um but if not um, they'll have to wait, but in August, the first weekend of August is franchisee training. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit me up. Just uh, email franchise at augustalongerservices.com or just go to augustalongerservices.com slash franchise and we can uh, set up a time to talk. So hopefully that helps and uh, I appreciate everyone being on here. Take care and have a great evening.